But I did all kind of dancing, toe, toe tap ballet, acrobatic. Wow. And that was, like I said, my first year in show business. Did you sing too? Well, I taught songs, not a sing song, but you know, <laughs> not a singer. <laughs> I'll have you for supper. <laughs> There's Dorothy. What's in the, what's under the, oh, there's a little baby under there. Yeah, it's Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy. That's a, hi, Dorothy. Oops. Sorry, Dorothy. Oh, no. so bad. Chesterton, Indiana. Chesterton, we're at the uh, Wizard of Oz parade. And we are trying to, we got there a little late, and we're trying to uh, catch up to the parade. Sir, I was born in Chicago on the southwest side. You want my year? Oh, no, not necessarily. Oh. In, the, in the, the 20s or 30s? or In the 20s, 1920 to be exact. Okay. And what do you want me to talk Is it about? Was a big family? You were the first child? or? No, I had three sis uh, two sisters, one older and one younger. My sister May was two years older than me, and my sister Betty six years younger than me. Uh -huh. So you were I'm, the second child? Yes. I'm the only midget in the family. My mother and father and sisters were normal size. Later, at, at, at about five or something, your parents took you to a, a doctor or something? Yes, and they examined me and knew that I'd be a midget from then on in. And they said, don't bother trying to make her grow or anything. Just let her alone. She'll be OK. And uh -huh. that's what they did, and I'm glad they did. Uh -huh. They didn't give you any special treatment or anything? No, I just uh -huh. ate and drank. You know, food and what everybody else did, and grew up to be like I am, yeah, normal right. but little. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Well, well. Do you know why it rained so much? We wanted a real rainbow. We also wanted to melt the Wicked Witch. I think we've accomplished both of them today. But we're still pleased everyone is here. Everyone's a munchkin today. Yes, we are. We have uh, Auntie M's pie baking contest at Emma's there on the, the corner of Porter and Calumet. That'll be at 1 o'clock. We're all okay. We're all okay. We'll have a beautiful rainbow this afternoon. We hope.
where the Tin Man contest is supposed to be, but the doors are locked. It's a, a certified public accountant's uh, office. Let's go around the back and see if we can find The fair. Now, you were in, in in 30, there were two fairs or two years? There was two fairs, one in 1933. My husband was in the one in 1933. He was the smallest midget then. He was advertised as Little Elmer because his real name is Parnell Elmer St. Alban. And he went as Little Elmer. And he was the smallest midget at the Chicago Fair in 1933. I don't know too much about that because I wasn't there. Okay, now was that the that was 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 that the uh, the little the little, the midget village? That was called the midget village, uh huh. This is the famous midget village, where nearly a hundred of these little people from all parts of the world live and do business just like a regular city. Here's Elmer, just a sample of the inhabitants, and rather a small sample at that. Both are full-grown men over voting age. Let's go in and get acquainted. Here comes Elmer. Hi, Elmer. That was Elmer. Now meet some more of the inhabitants. In the uniform is the captain of the guard, Prince Ludwig. Next is Mr. and Mrs. Liable, who have just celebrated their golden wedding anniversary. Where's Elmer? This picture will be a total loss without Elmer. There he is. What a man, Elmer. Now shake hands with Stella Royal, leading lady in the Midget Village dramatic performance. Here we have the royal family together. Stella, Helen, and Charlie, all talented performers. This little lady is telling the bandmaster about once meeting Queen Victoria. In this tiny town are all kinds of miniature stores and shops tended by the little people. How about a shine? The barber shop is one of the busiest places, for these people are classy dressers and very particular about their appearance. This is obviously a man's barber shop. See the ladies here? Those not busy keeping stores or doing guard duty are usually found autographing. How about a soda? With Elmer at the throttle, you're sure to get a good one. He claims that to mix a few sodas, he has to cover as much territory as the average size man playing 18 holes of golf. If you ever see him, ask him about the time he fell in the sink back of the fountain and almost drowned. You'll notice that these people have to work twice as hard to serve you as ordinary folks would. They have to reach twice as far and take twice as many steps. I suppose that's why they're twice as cheerful. Sometimes these midgets don't patronize their own shops. For instance, this guy can do better across the alley for a nickel. The mayor of the village, Mayor Doyle, takes his administrative duties seriously. Here he is, sending an officer out to investigate a complaint. The officer thinks it's a lot of baloney, but duty is duty. And now all he needs is a little wooden pistol. Besides offering excellent entertainment, Boxing is also a pretty good way to settle arguments. Mike and Ike are battling for the Mosquito Weight Championship. On this diminutive theater stage, excellent vaudeville performances are given, for most of these people have been performers many years. Johnny Leal, known as the miniature Will Rogers, is showing some clever rope tricks. And last but not least, Jolly Bonita from Indiana, who's little in a great big way. Only 42 inches high, but weighs 225 pounds at the last sitting. 
she does very little standing because, well, who ever heard of eating standing up? Careful of the ankles, Jolly. No, oh, no. Oh. And he, he was selling newspapers. He was like a little newspaper thing there. Uh, boy, not a boy, but a man. He was selling the little midget newspapers that were little tiny papers. And then he also played the clarinet there. He played a clarinet. And uh, I don't know too much more about what he actually did then because I didn't know him at that time, you know. Was that the one with Sally Rand? Sally Rand was at that. She was, they had all different things I remember being, you know, told about. They had Italian village. Oh, I think she a... played in the, the French village, but I don't know what they yeah. call the name of that. But that's where she was doing her Sally Rand dance. I mean, fan dance, excuse no. me. <laughs> and uh, what is that thing on your forehead? That's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Does that have anything to do with the uh, celebration that's going on today? I'm not sure they were selling them though, so I thought it'd be a pretty good idea. <laughs> what do you think of Wizard of Oz? Oh, it's great. I've read the book. I've seen the movie too. your parents? Well, I started taking dancing lessons when I was eight years old, and my mother saw a midget troupe advertised at the Englewood Theater on the southwest side. She took me down there to see the midget troupe of dancers and everything, and we went backstage. My mother talked to the manager, and I went backstage in the ladies' dressing room and tried on all her costumes and everything and really enjoyed it. And Mr. Rose said to my mother then, well, when she gets about 11 or 12, give us, a, you know, we'll keep in touch and maybe we can do something. So when I was 11 or 12, they wrote me again, my mother again. My mother asked, you know, me, because they asked her, she said, what do you think? I said, well, I'd like to try it. So my mother signed the contract because I was a minor. But she says, any time she wants to come home, she is not binded to this contract. So that was it. So I worked with them, and I worked with them till I was 19, and I called my mother one night, and I said, I want to come home. We're glad to have two winners for our Dorothy Longest Braid Contest. Would you tell us your name? Carla Beesborg. Carla, and how long was your braid, Carla? 30 inches. 30 inches, and an eighth, I think, too, right? And how about you? What's your name? My name is Amy Garvey. And Amy, how long was your braid? 19 and 3 fourth inches. 19 and 3 fourth inches. Okay. So we have... Can we see your braid? Yeah, oh, great. Right. Look at that. Oh, one more time. Oh, that's... Oh, that's... Wow. Okay. Terrific. And that's for their great. prize, they won $50 worth of products, hair care products from the salon. Thank you. And for their prize, they won $50 worth of products, hair care products from the salon, and also a $25 gift certificate for hair services. Great. Well, they'll <laughs> Thank you very much. Wow. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Gals, let me get, can I get your picture here real quick, too, before we okay, go? Why don't we let, let me get. And my mother called Mr. Rose and said, I'm coming to Detroit to take Mary Ellen home. And he said, you can't do that. And my mother says, oh, yes, I can. That was our contract. So she came and got me. And that's how I left that troop. You. Wave your wand. And here's your bubble. bubble. Yeah. So. And what does Glenda always say? Oh, the yellows are good. And there's no place. No. <laughs> yes. In our homes, long way, all yeah. the way from Louisville, Louisville Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. So, ready? Yeah. Ready? 
Ready to go. Ready to go. Make a pretty going down. <laughs> Ready to go. Ready to go. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> And then I went back in 1940 to the New York Fair. And then the last time I had seen my mother was when she took me to Midway Airport in 1940 to go to the fair. So I guess I had an inkling I should quit and go home for a while in 1939 when I quit. Let's go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> it, it, this, well, oh, it's really? That's only on video, it's actually. Only on video. And this On a Christmas Eve, I just couldn't get home to visit them Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. That was in 1940, and I called my mother and dad Christmas Day, December 26th, and I talked to my mother and my father. And then the next day, December 26th of 1940, I got a call that my mother had passed away that night. I think that's what you're talking about now. That was a sad thing because I wasn't home that Christmas to see them, and... I was only 19 when she died, and that was kind of sad. Not kind of sad, it was sad. The, the movie now uh, the, the, you were with a group and and they asked you to be in a movie okay that was in 1946 the troop of midgets I was with was called up to do a movie out in MGM studio called the three wise fools that had Margaret O'Brien was a star Thomas Mitchell Edward Arnold Louis Stone and Lionel Barrymore it was about these three wise men, they were lawyers, bankers, and whatever, I can't remember right now. That was Lionel Barrymore, Thomas, uh, Lionel Barrymore, Louis Stone, and Edward Arnold. And Margaret O'Brien and Thomas Mitchell had come over from Ireland. And Where did you meet Parnell? Well, he had visited me at Goldblatt's when I worked there at a Christmas show. And then, in 1947, he had called me and he said he had a bar now and would I come and visit him at the bar. So I had a friend bring me out there and then that's when he asked me if I would like to be a 26 girl. That was a thing that you sat behind a little counter, you paid a quarter, the customers paid a quarter, picked a number from a dice, one to six. You had 13 shakes, if you got two shakes in each shake, that was 26, and you'd get a dollar in drinks. I said, well, I can only work for you from November to March, because I am going back and show business in March. But instead, we dated, and then February 14th, Valentine's Day of 1948, we got engaged, and then April 3rd of 1948, we got married. opened a midget club bar. So that was the end of my show business career. 
You've got a very popular bar here. Why, uh, what's the secret? Well, I had nothing else to do after World War II, so I opened up a bar. Before that, I worked in a war plant. You worked in a war plant? Yeah. And Pullman Aircraft, right under East 103rd Street. You know, little people seem to keep to themselves a lot, don't they? Uh, years ago, they used to, used to not anymore. I don't know. Do you get any reaction from people who come in or not used to coming in here? And, and what kind of, how do they react? They just stop and look, and they don't know what to say. And they sit down and get used to us. Then it's, after that, just like, uh, you know, any other place. Does, does that bother you when uh, no. people... No. Don't bother me a bit. Uh, they learn to get used to it. But here, here you don't get that treatment. Most of these people are regulars. Most of them are your friends. Oh, yeah. Most of them are friends. Some of these people say they've been coming in here for, for 20 years. Oh, yes. Probably more than that, because we used to be on uh, 64th and Kedzie. And a lot of them followed us over here when we came over here. The thing that we found so fascinating coming in here and sitting and watching uh, Parnell and Mary make a drink, mostly Parnell, he doesn't, he pours from the bottle into a glass, not from a shot glass. You know, he can handle the bottle, in, I suppose, into the glass, not a shot glass. But we've watched him, and maybe he'll have three, three orders for a, uh, a Brandy Alexander. And you'll put them in the blender, pour the brandy in and other contents, whatever makes up the drink. And he will come out right to the drop. Without using a shot glass. Right. The you... two of us sit here and make a little bit. You know, it can't be right this time. And there won't be one drop left over. What, what brings them back, do you know? I don't know. They just come back. That's all. We're old friends. Mary Ellen, could I uh, talk to you a second? Yes, sir. Uh, Parnell was running the running the bar when you married him, and you jumped right in. How'd you like uh, jumping into the bar business? It was different than what I was used to, <laughs> but I got used to it. Why? Why different? Was was it a problem at first? No, I never really tended bar before or anything. Didn't know how to make a drink or anything, so I just got into it. You know, what and else it, can you do? <laughs> and you like it now. I do. I meet a lot of nice people. And I like people. It's doing great. We got a great crowd. The rain stopped finally, and everybody's having a ball. Is it something tonight? <laughs> yes, at the Moose Club. Oh, it's an Oz, uh, Judy Oz swap meet, isn't that it? Yep. An exchange all the, and an auction. All the munchkins will be there at one time for autographs and our other celebrities. And a munchkin auction. Oh, you don't get to buy a munchkin, really. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. It's a short auction. Hi. Oh, <laughs> well, the wizard gave me very special oil, and it worked all morning for the parade, so it, I'm counting on it to continue. Great. Okay, thanks, guys. Thank, thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. We'll see you back. Okay, thank you very much. Nice to see you. Yeah, see you. Oh, okay. See you. Bye-bye. See you later, Mary Ellen. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, there's a wish. <laughs> Whoa. Mary Ellen, how did you and Parnell get involved in the Wizard of Oz Festival? Oh, that came about because Jean Nelson that started it, she, at the Yellow Brick Road there, she knew of her Parnell. She heard of him, that we had our bar in Chicago. We all had the midget bar. Parnell was the first munchkin. He was the smallest soldier in the Wizard of Oz, and she heard about that. And, she came and contacted us and asked if we could come to Chesterton. At that time, we said no, because we had our bar and we couldn't close the bar. We opened up our first bar in 1948 at 64th and Pulaski on the southwest side of Chicago. We were there from 1948 to 1957. Then we opened up our other one at 4016 West 63rd Street, just uh, west of Pulaski. And we were there till 1982, 
Then the city bought the property for a library, and then that was the end of our career as a tavern owner. A lot of people thought that Mayor Byrne could have found another location and that uh, she did very little to try and save your bar. They should have relocated us. They tried, but they didn't succeed in it, so we just retired. Well, in 1983, we did go to Chesterton, and for the first uh, four years, 83, 84, 85, three years, excuse me, uh, we were the only two midgets that were in the parade. And Jean was running it by herself that time, and I had given, Parnell and I had given her names and address of other midgets that were munchkins, but she said no, because she was running it by herself. So we were the only two midgets at the Wizard of Oz Festival in Chesterton every year. But then uh, Parnell got sick. So then we didn't do it anymore, and then uh, Jean had hired other midgets to go to the festival. So then Parnell died in 1987, and we were married for almost 40 years. He didn't die December 4th, April 3rd. We've been married 40 years. Uh, what did you like about him? Oh, I liked everything about him. He was my guy. We both liked the same things. We were both in show business, so we were used to go, go, going, nightlife, and working hard all the time. He worked hard at the bar. He put in 14 hours a hour a day at the bar. And uh, when we were off, we always had a day off. We'd close up for holidays. We'd close up for vacations. And we were closed once a week. And, we didn't sit at home on our day off. We'd go out to restaurants and lounges, and we just enjoyed life. We were just go, go, go people, and we loved Vegas. And we, I guess because we're in show business, we're still in the nightlife people. I still like going out and you, still like life. <laughs> you like going to Cuba. We went to Cuba with you, didn't you? Oh, yeah, we went to Havana, Cuba, almost got shot. <laughs> when they were changing over from Batista to Castro, not really shot. I shouldn't say that, but it was. We went there when at the time when it was kind of the uproar thing. But it was an experience. We only stayed 24 hours, and that was enough. Though. <laughs> So we're going to do this song. If you all like to sing along, just go ahead and sing along with us. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue, and the dreams that you give to me really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star. Smells like lemon drops Away up on the chimney tops That's where you'll find me Somewhere over the rainbow
Okay, one last stage, one, one stage bow for old times. Always a ham. All right, great, great. You think you'll ever go back to show business? I don't think so, not at my age. Oh, really? You could think you'd come back, I bet. Oh, no, I don't think so. I'd like to, but I don't think so. Okay, you like the quiet life. <laughs> yeah, more settled down now, in a way. <laughs> Okay, I guess Thank that's it. Yeah. This much. is cut. Good. We're all good. Because <laughs> I ran out of stuff. <laughs>